it's Nikki here and welcome to a bookish Friday video. So today's video is my January wrap up which is basically all the books that I read throughout January 2020. So starting off with some bookish statistics, I read 16 books this month which is about right for me. Um, it was what I was basically averaging throughout 2019 so I'm quite happy with that. Now I read a mixture of different um, types of books so I read some physically, some read some audibly and I read um, some ebooks as well. So uh, physically I read 10 books, through audio I listened to 5 books and I read 1 ebook. So really nice mixture of um, different mediums to consume my books. So looking at page count of the physical books that I read and I do take the physical number like sneak peek um, I look at where the story ends and I take that page number and then I put it on a little tab at the front of the book and it is that number that I am taking for my page counts so I know Goodreads has it as a lot higher but I'm for my actual statistics in my bullet journal I um, I take those numbers so um, according to my tabs I have read a total of 3684 pages from my physical books the audio hours that I have listened to was 32 hours and 11 minutes so that is that obviously then ebook I not 100% sure how many pages they are so I'm not going to count them but my Goodreads will counted those anyway. Okay so of the books that I read eight of those were owned physically by myself and eight of those were borrowed so a good 50-50 um, across the board. I'm happy with that, more than happy. Um, I of the 10 books that I physically read, five of those were in paperback and five of those were in hardback. So we're again 50-50. And the authors, um, we had nine female authors and seven uh, male authors. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. We're about 50-50 all the way across the board with those statistics. So I'm very, very happy. Of course, the uh, genre that I read the most of was uh, sci-fi and fantasy. I read eight of those. I read three middle grade books this month. I read three mangas and graphic novels, one classic and one contemporary. So um, yeah, I really I didn't read any thrillers this month. And no non-fiction. Those are two genres that I really need to read in uh, February. So I will have to um, make sure that I have uh, at least one book from both of those genres in my February TBR. In regards to star ratings, um, I had no one stars, which is always a good thing. I had two two stars which to me is a book that's okay it wasn't great it wasn't really bad but probably a book that I'm going to uh, unhaul sometime in the future or already have done so um, but yeah it's a two star it's okay it's was okay. I had seven three stars which is about average for me of three star is it was really good and I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that I've read it. We had four four stars so that is really good because that means that I really enjoyed those books and I had three five stars so there were a couple of books in here that I absolutely loved. So let's get started with the books that I actually did read. So I did do a readathon during the month of January and it was called The Book Quest and it was hosted by um, the Paper Tavern on Twitter. So um, we had 
a lot of um, prompts in which we had to fulfill um, our books. Um, I'm not going to go through the prompts because I did that in my January TBR video. So if you want to know the prompts that these books fulfilled, then you can go back and watch that one. So I'm just going to tell you what I thought about the books that I read. So you've already seen it. I did read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz for this book quest. Um, it's by L. Frank Baum and I really enjoyed this. This is a really naive, um, whimsical, innocent uh, classic and I liked the bit at the beginning of this book. We had, um, we had like a little introduction written by L. Frank Baum back in Chicago, April 1900. Wow. Um, and I did actually make a little note on the bottom of this and it says um, it aspires to be in a modernised fairy tale in which the wonderment and joy are retained and the heartaches and nightmares are left out. Um, that's what he wanted this book to be and I felt that that is what he achieved. It There was moments of ooh, something you know, bad is happening, but they were quickly dealt with, quickly um, got over and they moved on. There was never any moments in here where anybody was truly in peril or you felt frightened for the characters. It was just whimsical, magical and a really innocent read. Um, a beautiful story that you could read to your children for bedtime and they would thoroughly enjoy it and you would thoroughly enjoy it as well. So yeah. I gave um, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz three stars. The next book I read for the book quest was Shadow Black by Sebastian de Castell. This is the second book in the Spellslinger series and I really enjoyed this and I read this really quickly. Um, I flew through this. Um, it's it's such a quick and easy read that I almost felt like I could jump straight on to book three. Um, I really wanted to, in fact. Um, I do own book three and I wanted to jump straight into it, but I had other books that I needed to get to um, on my TBR. So sadly, <laughs> I'm going to have to wait for book three. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I like the characters in here. I like the introduction of the new characters that we get in this book. Um, and I really like where the storyline is going. It's really starting to, um, like, there are new mysteries being introduced in this one, um, which I feel like we're going to learn more and more of the further along the series that we go. And I just can't wait to see where it goes to next. I absolutely love the sassiness of the characters in here, the jokey camaraderie that you have. And although um, Helen, I think his name is, is the the main sort of protagonist in this, he is no hero. Like, you know how you have the chosen one trope? Well, he is kind of like the chosen one in reverse. So um, yes, he's the main protagonist, but he's he's not the best one in the book he's not the he's not the hero you might think he might be um he he has he makes mistakes he doesn't quite have control of his powers and it's really nice and refreshing to see that you know where a character isn't like you know suddenly the most amazing magician in the world kind of thing he's he's not and um I like that. It's refreshing to see that. So I gave uh, Shadow Black four stars because I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next book I read was a library book and this was The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This is the first book in the First Law trilogy and this is another book that I really want to get book to book two in. Um, you felt like throughout the majority of this book you were sort of building a world and it felt very much like The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien because you feel like you're getting introduced to all the different characters and how they're all suddenly verging into this one moment right before they set off on a big long journey. Um, that's kind of where it's heading. <coughs> But again, you've got like questionable characters in here. You've got um, a guy who really is just out for glory and fame and has kind of bought his way into um, his position. 
and he's kind of just messing about really until uh, some of his friends kind of very cleverly trick him into thinking ha huh, I'll show you um, when actually they knew all along that he would change his attitude um, I just love the sassiness the crassness of this um, there's not a lot of female characters in here I think I counted two in the whole book um, it is very masculine in this but I kind of love that I do I really really do um, and even the females in here are like badass kick-ass strong females which I absolutely loved um, you know and and the blokes are kind of like trying to be like you're a woman like be a woman and the girls are like sod off <laughs> um yeah so um i really really enjoyed this and yeah i gave this one four stars as well thoroughly enjoyed it absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it um so yes the next book I read was another library book and this is Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. <sighs> okay, in regards to this series, all along I have said to myself, I don't need to own these books because I can get them out of my library. I don't need to own these. After finishing reading this book, I so want to own this series like I have got my eye on the box set on Amazon and it's been reduced in price by a lot um, like like half price and I am so tempted to buy it because oh, this is the fifth book and this is the best book out of the series for me this is where everything just started again you're following a lot of different characters and it was at this book where you start to see them all coming together them all starting to converge into one storyline and the ending of this one i was on the edge of my seat like what what is happening it was so like full of drama and stuff and I've been hearing about Sarah J Mass's romances being quite smutty and quite, you know, full on. And up until before this book, I was like, mm, really? Are they though? Got to this book and it was like, all the smut. Just like, fey smut. Who knew that was my thing? But it is, apparently, because I loved this book. I loved it so much so empire of storms got five stars for me because i finished this book and i was like where's the next book i need the next book and i need to own this series and for me if it's a library book and i finish the book thinking i need to own this that is a five stars in my opinion because i want it i want it on my shelves even though i know i could get this from the library anytime i wanted to reread it but no, I went to own this. I loved it. It was... <sighs> I loved it so much. So, yeah, quickly moving on. Uh, the next book that I read um, was This Beauty. Oh. The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third and final book in the Folk of the Air series. Yeah, Folk of the Air series. The first one being The Cruel Prince. The second one being The Wicked King. And this one is The Queen of Nothing. I have waited to read this book for so long. Since I finished reading The Wicked King last year in 2019, I have wanted to read this book. And Holly Black did not do me wrong. She finished the story off perfectly. The, the events of this book, which I can't go into because of spoilers, um... I, there were just there were some events that happened that I was like what no way and it was just like I did not expect that to happen but when you look at it you kind of realize that of course it was going to happen like it made sense for the story and oh it was just so amazing and I just love Jude's character she's the main character in here I just absolutely love her character and I love the cruel prince is it Carden 
I believe it's cardon. It's cardon, isn't it? Yeah, it's cardon. I'm sure it's cardon. Yes, it is. Um, I love cardon. He's a broody, miserable, but oh, oh, he's lovely. I love cardon. Um, I just absolutely love this series, and I keep trying to convince Charlotte from Wacky World of Lottie's channel uh, to read this series. I wasn't talking to you, that's why. Um, so yeah, I keep trying to go... Rudely interrupted. I keep trying to convince Charlotte that she has to read this series. I believe she has now bought The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King in paperback. She's waiting for The Queen of Nothing to come out in paperback. Um, but she has to get on it. You have to get on it, sweetheart. Read this book. Brilliant. Gave it five stars. What a surprise. No surprise at all. I loved it. It was amazing. <sighs> I had a good month this month. A really good month. Okay, and the next book I read for the book quest was The Binding by Bridget Collins. Now, if you might remember, this book was in my five star predictions video as well. I hyped this book up in my own head so much. I put it on such a high pedestal that I think I'm going to have to reread this again in the future because spoilers it didn't quite reach five stars for me. <laughs> um, I ended up giving this three stars. Um, I loved the writing in this and I loved the different perspectives that we got. This is this book is divided up into three sections. So the the first part you get to see the main character um, Emmett's uh, point of view, um, and then the uh, second part is like a flashback um, to a time before. And then the third part is from another person's perspective. Um, I don't want to say much because that might be spoilery. Um, but oh, I kind of figured out what was going to happen. I kind of figured out how this would end. And there was no big surprises or revelations in this. The writing was beautiful, um, the story was beautiful, but it was very predictable for me and so there was no surprises or anything like jaw dropping that I didn't expect to happen. Um, so yeah, I just, as I say, I think that because I built it up so much in my head that it needs a reread because now that the now that the pedestal has been removed, which I put there, um, I put the hype on this book. No, nobody else did. I put the hype on this book, um, and so it, it's not the book's fault that it fell short of that. Um, so I do want to reread it in the future, um, and hopefully, I might see. Something that I might have missed the first time round, I don't know. Um, but yeah, sad to say it only got three stars from me, which is unfortunate. So yeah, that's very sad, but still a good story. I enjoyed it. Now the final book that I read for the book quest readathon was the group book. And that was The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. This is one of the books that I listened to on audio. I managed to get it. I think it was on Scribd. So I listened to it on Scribd. I really enjoyed that story. Um, I liked the different take on the King Arthur legend. Um, and there was lots of twists and turns and some gender swapping on certain roles as well. Um, and I really did enjoy it. Um, I did think that if I enjoyed the book enough, I would go out and get myself a physical copy of it because it is a very beautiful book. Um, but so far, I haven't felt the need to go out and purchase it. Um, so it did just get three stars from me. So I won't, I probably won't end up purchasing that book, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, it was a good story and I really did enjoy it. But... 
um, not enough for me to go out and purchase a physical copy. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other audio books that I listened to this month. Not fair, any readathons, just books that I uh, either listen through on Scribd or listen to on uh, Borrowbox, which is my libraries app. Um, so one of the first books that I actually read in January was The Wizards of Once Twice Magic by Cressida Cowell. Um, that is the second book in the Wizards of Once trilogy. Um, it is read by David Tennant <coughs> and I listened to this on Borrowbox, my library's app. Um, it's similar to Libby but my library changed from Libby to Borrowbox. Anyway, um, I really enjoy that story, uh, the Wizards of Once series so far. Um, the sad thing is, Borrowbox doesn't have book three. So I'm going to have to wait for that one to come out on Borrowbox or Scribd before I can listen to it on audio. I love the story. I love the innocence of it. It's definitely a children's book. It is a middle grade. Um, and it is definitely a story that kids will love. Um, however, I'm not a child, um, so I'm, I'm probably not the um, correct age for it. But I love middle grades. I love how simplistic they are, how innocent they are. Um, I love them. I do. I really, really love them. And I really enjoyed um, Twice Magic, so I gave that three stars. Ooh, the next audiobook I listened to was Bear Town by Frederick Backman. And this was a story about um, a town called Bear Town. And they, I think it was based in Canada. And um, it's a town where hockey is their sport, ice hockey is their sport. And it's a very hard hitting contemporary. And I know Pages and Pens read it and absolutely fell in love with it and cried because of it. And I can see why. I didn't cry with it. Um, it was a very, as I say, hard hitting story. Um, events happen that divide the town. Um, it was an important story to tell, to show the different sides of how people react to um, certain events. It did include a rape, so be warned if you do pick up Bear Town um, and, and, and want to read it. If you are sensitive to um, the subject of rape, uh, it does include that. Um, so it was very... <sighs> It was very hard to listen to sometimes, but I could see how the different reactions of different people and the reasons for their reactions as well, it seemed very lifelike, very like as if those that could really happen and probably does happen. And um, it was heart wrenching and <sighs> yeah, I think for me though because I'm not an ice hockey fan um, and I'm not very sporty obviously um, for me apart from the emotional impact of the story I just it was quite I didn't I didn't get involved in it I was very especially as well because the way that the book was written and the audio book was read I felt very um, detached from it because it was kind of written as if as if somebody is telling you the story. Um, it's not actually written um, from the character's points of view. It's written and read like a narrator reading the story to you. And so because of that, I felt detached from it. Like I'm listening to Once Upon a Time. You know, um, so I, because of that, I only gave it three stars. I do think it is an important book to um, to read, to understand and um, and discuss the issue of rape and how people respond to that allegation. Um, but for me, I felt detached, so I only gave it a three stars. 
The next audiobook I read, I don't know why I read this, but it was only like one and a half, two hours maybe on script. So I thought, oh, you'll do while I'm doing my makeup. Um, it is Opal, which is a Raven Cycle short story. So if you don't know, I read the Raven Boys Cycle uh, last year as a buddy read with Charlotte from A Wacky World of Lottie and I wasn't impressed. <laughs> In fact, I decluttered those books. I unhauled them, I gave them to my library, they were very happy to receive them um, and I was very happy to get rid of them. I did not like them at all. Um, I got very annoyed with them. Ask Charlotte. She, we, she laughed at me quite often when I went off on a rant about them. Um, I have heard that people say you need to read them a second time to really appreciate them and at first I did think to hang on to them to reread them but then the more I thought about putting myself through it a second time the more I thought no the library would much more appreciate these books than I will so and I needed the space on my shelf so I got rid of the Raven Cycle series. Um, so I have no idea why I picked up this story, um, but this story is about Opal and Opal is one of the characters um, in the Raven Cycle um, that you don't get to know much about. She's kind of like a magical creature um, and um, this short story was about as useful as a chocolate fire guard in my opinion. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, obviously the um, the book was written by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, as I say, it was only an hour, hour and a half. I listened to it while I was doing my makeup. I gave it a two star. I wasn't much impressed. But then I should have known because I didn't like, like the Raven Cycle. So what can you do? <laughs> um, the next audiobook that I listened to, I actually listened to uh, on Friday the 31st of January so I just managed to slip this one in and that is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This was actually a graphic novel I believe and it had like a full cast reading it on script. It was a really great little um, audiobook. It was so funny and so great and I was chuckling all the way through it. Um, I think if I can find this graphic novel uh, somewhere like on World of Books or somewhere like that and pick it up quite cheaply I might pick it up um, a physical copy of it I did give it a three stars I really did enjoy it the ebook that I read this month was the second volume of fairy tale which is kind of a uh, manga I want to say um, that is written by Hiro Mashima um, and it's basically about wizards guild and they have to they have like a jobs board and they have to go off and do a job and then they earn credits for that which then gives them money to spend <coughs> as I say this was the volume two and although I did kind of enjoy it I'm thinking I'm going to DNF the series. I know I can get the other um, volumes for free on my Kindle Unlimited subscription on my Amazon Fire tablet, but I'm really not enjoying like the style of the story and I'm just not enjoying it. So yes, I could get them for free, but Am I enjoying the experience of reading them? Not particularly. I gave this volume two stars. So I think I am going to DNF the um, series. It just means then that I will have more space to add ebooks of other books that I'm going to enjoy reading on my Amazon Fire instead. So yeah, that was my ebook for the month. So on to the other physical books that I read this month. Um, I read Holes by Louis Sasha. Um, now this was a book that my husband said that he read at school and he quite enjoyed it. So I picked it up and I really enjoyed it too. Um, it is a book about a young boy who is 
um, convicted of stealing some tennis shoes, I believe. Um, he's always had a history of bad luck and he is sent to a boys juvenile detention centre, uh, Camp Green Lake. And here he is set to task to dig a six foot wide hole uh, every day while he's at this camp. Nobody knows why the boys are set to this task, but there they are. And if they find anything of interest, they have to tell their supervisor and then their supervisor checks it out and stuff. I enjoyed it. I quite uh, quite liked it. This was written a, quite a, a while ago. Um, when was it written? Back in 1998. So yeah, it is a good 20 years old. So we can kind of understand why it might have some, uh, you know, older views on things. So I did really enjoy this. I gave Holes three stars. The next book that I read was Doll Bones by Holly Black. I really enjoyed this. Um, this is a story about three teenage children, two boys, uh, two girls, sorry, one boy. Um, events happen that mean that the boy can't play with the girls anymore. Um, they normally play with their dolls and toys together and he ends up having to stop playing with them for a specific reason which I won't go into, spoilers. Um, so the girls trying to convince him to come back to play with them come up with the idea that this doll is haunted and so they have to go and bury her at this specific graveyard um, and he has to come with them to help them and so off they go on this little journey together without telling their parents, obviously, um, and they have to go take this doll back. I loved how Holly Black writes this story so that if you're interested in the supernatural, there's plenty of supernatural events happening in here. But if you don't believe in the supernatural, then she puts in enough little clues for you to say, oh, it happened because of that, you know. So I just loved how clever the writing was in this and I had a thoroughly great time reading this middle grade. It was so much fun. I do absolutely love Holly Black's writing as you know. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend this book. I absolutely loved it and I gave Doll Bones four stars. The next book I read was a graphic novel manga which is Death Note Black Edition Volume 3. <sighs> I love this series. I love this series. Like, I am a massive fan. I got quite a few Death Note um, bits and pieces for... Catch that. That's because nobody's talking to you! Shut up! Uh, I got a lot of stuff for Death Note for Christmas and I love them. And uh, I got to the end of this and I was like, why do I not own volume four because I need volume four so yeah I own volumes one to three in the black edition I do not own volume four five and six in the black edition and I need them I need them now I need to know what's happening next the story is really starting to build I love it um it is a story about Shinigami God and his Death Note. And if you haven't read Death Note, you really need to pick it up. You're missing out on a great, great story. The artwork in this is amazing. Um, absolutely stunning. I, 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 I love this series. I will shout about it till the end of my days. <sighs> I love you. I love you so much. So yeah, I really need to get on to volume four. I gave Death Note a five stars. Obviously, I loved it. Love you. So that was that one. And then another book that I read in January was this naked book. Sorry, hide it. Um, uh, the Song Rising by Shannon, um, Samantha Shannon. So this is the third book in the Bone Season uh, series. Book four is hopefully coming out later this year and there was a read-along um, with the Bone Season hosted by a frolic through fiction, a girl called Ashley. And I read this in January. 
I really enjoyed this. Like, this was one of the first books I read. No, fourth, fifth book I read. So it's been quite a while since I read it. But I do remember that lots of things were starting to happen in this. You could really start to feel this revolution beginning to happen. And um, you could just really see the main character, Paige, I believe her name is. Yeah, Paige really starting to come into herself. She's only a teenager. She's only 19, I believe, but she's starting to really sort of get her power, I suppose, get her really become independent and strong and really find her footing in this book. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I did give the song Rising four stars. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah really great and can't wait actually for season uh, for book four um in fact kind of missing the world of the bone season um because obviously i don't have another book to go to yet until book four does come out um but when it does i will be buying it and i believe that they're not gonna make the big hardbacks i don't know i'm worried that they're not gonna do the big hardbacks and I have book one, two and three in the hardbacks. And I'm afraid, I'm worried that they're only going to bring out, um, it out in paperback. Which means I'm going to have to buy the first three books again. And then, but anyway. So yeah, that was my massive January uh, wrap up. I read a lot of books. This is a long video. It's going to take me a long time to edit it. So yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe as always. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!